we've been talking about dreams. We've been talking about dreams. We've been talking what it means to, to, have, a, to have a dream from God and to follow that dream out. And that's what today I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to be talking about follow the dream. Zacharias went to the temple and he heard from God that God would give him a son in his old age and his wife Elizabeth would be with child. Gabriel said this is the way it would be, but Zacharias didn't believe that. And he was mute for probably almost a year because of that. Mary, when she heard from Gabriel, her life was changed and turned upside down too. Mary left and went to see her uh, cousin Elizabeth, and she saw that Elizabeth was six months pregnant with a child. Oh my goodness, everything, when, when she walked in, the child leaped within Elizabeth, and Elizabeth actually prophesied and said to Mary exactly what Gabriel said to Mary. So she kind of knew that God was involved in this, and oh my goodness, it was an exciting day. And then after three months, Mary returned, and she went back home to, to Nazareth. And now she has been pregnant at least three months, between three and four months. And you know what happens when women, when they're three or four months old? The baby bump. So everybody knew she was pregnant. Wonder what that conversation was like. The Bible doesn't tell us the conversation between Mary and her parents. You know, they saw, hey, she went to be with Elizabeth three months ago, three and a half months ago. Now she's coming back pregnant. Oh my. You know the first thing that entered their mind? You're thinking it. And she's saying, no, no, that's not what happened. That's not what happened. But then Joseph heard the news. Most likely, he had had no conversations with Mary whatsoever. Most likely, Mary's dad went to talk to Joseph's dad and uh, to share the news. That's how, when they had the betrothal, that's how those things got, be that's how they began. And they got started. Most likely, there was a, a range part of all those things coming together. And they had had the time where, where Mary and Joseph came together, and, and the betrothal was a legal thing. They came together, they read the vows, and they were legally married at that point, but then they were separated for a time that we'll talk about in just a moment. Now Joseph hears. hears. His father probably came and spoke to him, and could you just imagine what was going through Joseph's mind? There's what I call a, a cooling-off period where Joseph's got to get his mind wrapped around this. This is the woman that he had been dreaming of. This was the thoughts of marriage, husband and wife. How precious this would be. He's gone through the first steps. This is his legally betrothed wife. Now she's pregnant. Obviously, he thought she was unfaithful. And this is more than just a a breakup. This, it's legally binding. There would have to be a dissolving of the marriage. In Matthew 1, verse 19, it said, Then Joseph, her husband, already calls him husband, says, Being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly, privately. <clears throat> so he's saying, you know, I'll do the right thing, but I don't have to embarrass her. Now, Zacharias didn't believe Gabriel. Mary was convinced when she heard Gabriel. She was convinced even more when Elizabeth spoke to her. But Joseph, it says, was considering. To me, to the, to me this speaks of hope. It's a dream. But yet he's preparing his heart for love. He's been there preparing the place that they would live together, have a life together. He had not talked to her to this point. He did not know her claims. I'm sure Joseph's parents talked to him. You know they did. They probably said, son, it's not your fault. 
It's not your fault. They probably said this statement that every parent in this, this circumstance would say, son, that's not going to be the only woman. We'll, we'll take care of this. Have you all ever heard this? There, there are more fish in the sea. That really doesn't help, though, does it? When, when your circumstances have been dashed, when your dreams have come crashing down around you, but yet in this moment of pondering and considering, he has a dream too. Let's look at what Scripture says. Verse 20. While he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to your Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. That means Jehovah saves, and he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child. Virgin will be with child and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. This is Scripture, which is translated God with us. Gabriel reminds Joseph of Scripture. He hasn't talked to Mary, but he knows Gabriel. I, it doesn't say Gabriel, but it was the same Gabriel that talked to Zacharias, that talked to Mary. I have a feeling this is the, the trequel. This is where he came together and said to, to Joseph, don't be afraid. Now, he's not saying don't be afraid of me. Don't be afraid to take Mary, your wife. Go on with this. Because she wasn't unfaithful, she was faithful to me. She wasn't with another man. That which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She's going to bring forth a son. God's son. The Christ child, the Messiah. She'll bring forth this child. This is what Scripture, listen to me now, promised. God promised a Savior. He promised the Messiah. And Joseph's hearing God's angel, angel who, who the Bible says stood in the presence of God. And he hears the angel said, this is the one Isaiah spoke about. Chapter 7, verse 14. The virgin will bring a child. God's child. Emmanuel, God with us. Don't fear. Listen, church, this is the amen of the Holy Spirit. Y'all know what I'm talking about when God's Spirit speaks with your spirit? Have you ever heard God's voice? Some people say, well, I've never heard an audible voice, neither have I, but I've heard God speak. I've heard God speak in ways that were so unique in particular. And there's something that happens when God speaks. When God's Spirit speaks to our spirit, there's what I call the amen. The word amen means it is true, so be it. And, it, and it's like the light of heaven shines in our heart, and nobody has to convince us of this. When God uniquely speaks in that such way, <coughs> He says to us, He says plainly, this is true. Have you ever heard that? You ever heard the wooing of God? The drawing of God? You ever heard the enlightenment of God? God's light just kind of comes and, my goodness, He can get your attention, can He? He can speak in such an amazing way, can He? And when He does speak like this, and we hear Him, we know it now. Y'all, listen, I, I grew up in church when it was a little bit different from our church today. We were not quite as dignified as the modern-day church. You know, when modern-day church, we got to come looking right. 
we got to come sounding right. right? And, and we want everybody to think when we walk in the back door that we're perfect. Nobody, we don't go tell everybody, I just had a fight with my wife. I kicked the dog on the way out the door. Somebody cut me off and I wanted to cut them off. We don't talk about any of that because we're church folks. But yet when we get in here and God speaks and God begins to talk to us and the Word of God is read. Now, look, and God begins to amen His Word. He never promises He'll amen my Word. But if I'm preaching His Word, from His heart to your, war, your heart, He'll say amen. Now, when I grew up in church, we learned that in, in, around people, when they would hear something, that when God would speak to their heart, they didn't say, you know, it'd be a good time for an amen in church. I mean, they just immediately said, amen. And, and, and it was an encouragement. Because you see, someone might say it, but then someone else will be thinking, that's what I was thinking too. That's a good word. I'm in agreement with that. As a matter of fact, I come into this and I tell you, God, here I am, speak. Draw me close. Lord, your servant is listening. And when we amen God, there's something amazing that happens there. There is an amen of the Holy Spirit. And I believe as Joseph was there and he's hearing Gabriel speak, there began to be the light of truth as it is revealed. Now, you can resist the Holy Spirit. It's not wise. It's the battle of His will and our will. The Bible says there is a way that seems right into the man. Sometimes God not only has to talk to us, sometimes He's got to convince us. Sometimes that doesn't happen immediately. You know, one of my biggest regrets is that when God wooed me with His Holy Spirit and called me to Himself to call me from being a sinner and I knew that all I needed to do was to trust Him as my Savior and Lord, give my heart to Him. And, and, and it happened in church. Now, it could have happened anywhere, but it happened in church. But I thought, Lord, there's a whole bunch of people in here and I'm embarrassed. And I got to go up there by the way, I didn't have to come up here, but there wasn't any reason why not. When God's Spirit spoke with my spirit, I was supposed to be obedient. But it was weeks, it was months before I said yes. As a matter of fact, when God put it together, my dad woke me up on a Saturday, and he was going to drive to one of his carpet mills, and he said, son, you want to go? I said, sure. And I got in a carpet van that dad never drove home. He had his own car. And we rode to that mill in the carpet van. <clears throat> and he knew something was up. Because when God is dealing with somebody, you kind of know it. And he began to talk to me like he needed to and like I needed to hear. And see, what I didn't know is what God was wooing in my spirit my dad was amening in his spirit and i was hearing a call from god and i heard an amen of the same things from my dad and the next day on that sunday night should have been that sunday morning but on a sunday night i felt like i was going to explode until i said amen to god's amen and i've never regretted it since you know, it's a compliment when God speaks. It's an amazing thing when God comes and says, can we talk? Can we talk? And in this time of Joseph's broken dreams, when his heart had been ripped out from among him, he could have said, well, this is my thoughts. Surely she was unfaithful, but... Gabriel said, no, that which is conceived in her is it's of the Holy Spirit of God. 
God does so much more when He speaks. He expects us to believe Him and to trust Him and to do it by faith. But faith is not just believing some whim. It's a truth. Now, you may have had dreams, and you say, I believe that it's God's will for me to do so-and-so. I'm going to build a business, and that may not be God's plans, but it's your plans, and you want God to amen your plans. Hold on, don't, don't speak for God. But when He speaks, you amen what He speaks. You see, faith is believing the Word of God. It's believing Him when He speaks to our spirit, and it will be backed up by the Word of God. You see, Joseph knew this to be true because he knows it, this is from the one who stood in the presence of God, but he's also talking about Scripture. Look what it says here. He said in, in, in verse number 23, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, bear a son, shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. And, and in Joseph's mind, he's saying, Wow. This is true. This is God's Word. Are you telling me that Mary is that virgin? The, the light started to come on. And he went from lowest despair to, in my opinion, y'all ready for this? I think he had a wow moment. Don't you love it when God shows up and just goes, wow! And you're saying, you're going to do all this for me, for everyone. <clears throat> Don't override the Holy Spirit when He speaks. Don't argue with the Holy Spirit when He speaks. Pray about it. Be quiet. Listen. Ponder. He speaks our language. He amens it. So trust Him. Remember when He spoke to you before. Listen, church. Remember the blessings that He's done for you already. Remember the promises. Are you ready for this? Then get up and act on it. Act on it. If it's faith, act on it. God should not have to come to us again and again and again and say the same words to us over and over again when all he's looking for is a belief, a trust, and by faith getting up and doing something about it. So you know what Joseph did? Verse 24 says he got up and took his wife. He took his wife. All this was beautiful. Now let me tell you how the process worked in that day. He would go, the parents were probably were involved in this, and they would, they would pick the, the groom and the bride out for each other, and they would come together, and, and they would be in front of the priest, and they would, they would say the words, they would make their vows, they would make their covenant with each other. Their hands would be tied together, they would be one. The breaking of the glass. No longer two. One. Old things passed away. At that point in time, they were legally married. But then he would go home for preparation. He would get everything in order. He might have to build on to his dad's house. There would have to be a place for the bride to come. He'd have to get all of that stuff ready. And then, you see, this was the dad helping the groom. And then when everything was put together just right, the dad would look at the groom and say, Go get your bride, son. And when he did, the, 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 the wedding party would come together and they would blow the trumpet because the bride would not know the day or the time that the groom was coming. They were to be there and be ready and prepared. And when the, when the trumpet was blown. It was for the bride to get up then, get everything ready, get dressed, and go to the door. And then the shout, the announcement, here comes the groom. And she would see her groom. And he would come in. And he would go to be 
with his wife. There would be a special place that was prepared for them. And they would go and be together. Now, you can imagine in your mind's eye what the groom and the bride would do at that point in time. But not Mary and Joseph. Because she was with child. And they probably had not seen each other since the betrothal. But they go into a room and they probably sat down. And their eyes met. And Mary could say, can we talk? Yeah. Joseph, Gabriel came, who stood in the presence of God and told me that I was going to have a child. I said, how can this be? I've never been with a man. The Lord will come and enthrone Himself about you. And you will have a child of the Holy Spirit. So Joseph, I just told him, let it be as you said. Now at that point in time, you know Joseph's heart had to be doing this. Because he was coming to say, Mary, I had a dream too. God spoke to me in a dream and said, don't be afraid to go and take you as my bride. Because he told me that that which is conceived in you is, is of God, it's of the Holy Spirit. And he says you're going to have a child and it's going to be a boy and we're supposed to call him Jesus. He is Emmanuel. Mary, he told me the Messiah. Can you imagine as their eyes met when they had this conversation? And they embraced. As husband and wife, not like they would have otherwise. He did not know Mary until after Jesus was born. But they became one in a different way. There was probably a sigh. Whew. There was probably a, man, I'm so glad you said that. I can't believe you said that. And then there was something so special between them because you see, I believe the light of God shined in that room that day to encourage them that God was with them. That the dream that they had was going to come true, but it was going to be a different dream. Now they had to get up and follow the dream. So they got up. I, I, I know Mary's dad didn't know what was going to go on when they went in behind those doors and had that conversation. I'm not sure that Joseph's parents knew. But you see, the next thing that would happen would be that they would come out together and there would be a party going on. Y'all like that? There would be eating, there would be drinking, there would be dancing, there would be a celebration, then there would be a, the announcement of the husband and wife, and all would clap and shout. And I'm here to tell you, in heaven, all were shouting and clapping. Because what a day. And they were a part of it and smiled. And enjoyed. They came together. Jesus used this same example in his teaching. Matter of fact, it's all through the Old Testament. And it's the description of the New Testament too. You see, you know what I am? You know what we are? We're the bride of Christ. And there was a time when I was 10 years old when God wooed me with His Holy Spirit and He called me to Himself and I finally said, yes. And I gave my heart and as best a 10-year-old can, I gave my life and I opened up my heart and Jesus came and filled my heart and He's never left it empty. 
I'm a child of the king. We were betrothed together. And he gave me a gift. Ephesians calls it the earnest of the Holy Spirit. When my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bride and I got married, I gave her a ring. And she gave me one. That thing's never been back over that knuckle since she placed it on that finger. And I cherish that thing. Oh, other people have told me to take it off. I've had surgeries. You have any metal? Got that thing. Well, you have to take it off. I'm like, good luck. Uh, I think Liam bought it small on purpose. Y'all hear me? Uh, the only way that thing's coming off of it is if they cut it in two. They said, well, we'll put tape over it. I'm like, I don't care. Do whatever you want to. It's not coming off. It's mine. You see what God gave me? He didn't put a physical ring on my finger, but he gave me the gift of the Holy Spirit that is the spirit of promise. It's the spirit of comfort. And he lives within me. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. His spirit is always there. And then he left because John 14 says he's gone to prepare a place for me. And if he goes and prepare a place for me, he will come again and receive me unto himself that where I am, there he will be also. So right now I'm in the waiting period. I've got the earnest of the Holy Spirit. I'm the bride of God. He's going to prepare a place. But there's going to come a time when the Father says to the Son, go get your bride. And when he does, Gabriel's going to wet, wet them lips and he's going to blow that, blow that trumpet and Christ is going to come back for his church. And there will be a shout. And we will go and we will be with Christ. We will meet him in the air and we will go home to be with him. And the party will just be beginning. Revelations 19 verse 7 calls it the marriage supper of the Lamb. What a day that will be. The dowry of God, of the groom, will come and be given to the bride. And we will receive crowns. We will receive the presence of love from the Father to us. And we will never have to leave Him. We will be His. We are bonded with Him. Listen to me now. Forevermore. There is no divorce in heaven. There is no divorce. And there will be no goodbyes. There will be no more pain. There will be no more sorrows. There will be no more broken hearts. There will be nothing of great dreams that come crashing down around us because every wildest dream that you've ever dreamed will come true and so much more. Peace I leave with you. Peace I give to you. And as I cherish my bride and would do anything in the world for her, so much more God loves us. Because we listen. Because we said yes when he made his marriage offer to us. Because we received that great gift from him. Jesus gave a parable. I say this in closing. About ten virgins. And they were pledged. And they had a lamp. And they were supposed to keep that lamp ready because he may come at a time when it was unexpected for them. Five of those virgins were wise. And they had everything prepared and ready. There was oil in the lamp. Listen to me. Oil in the Old Testament and in the New Testament is a symbol for the Holy Spirit. The other, their lamps were empty. And when the groom came and called for the bride, five 
had oil, had the Spirit of God, and were ready. And they went forth to the wedding. At that point in time, the five that did not have the oil, who were not ready, said, come, give us so that we can have two. No, no, no. I've got mine. You should have been ready. And they were left empty. Are you listening? So when the groom came, he came for those that were his. And the others were, are you ready for this? Left behind. Are you listening? Left behind. Did you hear me? Left. God called those people home. They were ready. The Spirit was with them to receive the joy of the Lord. You know what he said to the others? I'm sorry. I'm going to depart from you. Now is the time for preparation. Now is the time to get ready. Now is the time of decision. Now is the time to say yes. Now is the time to obey. Now is the time to give your heart and life to Christ. One of the sad things about being a pastor is I'll talk to people and they'll explain to me why they're not ready. And they'll say, but I can do, I need to do this, or I want to do this, or I'm not ready to do this. I, I think that I would be embarrassed. You know what you would be embarrassed? Is if he called you home and you didn't say yes. Oh, there's joy. There's joy. Or there's a heart that is broken. Today's the day of decision. If you don't know Christ as your Savior and Lord, listen, if you feel the Holy Spirit of God speak to your heart and tell you that you need to give your heart and life to Christ, you need to be saved. If you hear that, today is the day of salvation. Don't delay for tomorrow what God wants you to do today. Act.